Coming up next on Jersey Matters, New Jersey Congressman Chris Smith on why he's not holding a town hall and may file charges against a man who burst into his office. Also, bald eagles in New Jersey. There used to be only two in the state. Now they're all over the place. What happened? And the Bamberger's legacy and how he's connected to Albert Einstein. Those stories and much more because Jersey Matters. Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. We are pleased to be joined by Congressman Chris Smith from New Jersey's 4th Congressional District, which includes Monmouth, Ocean, and part of Mercer County. He's been in the Congress for 37 years, and as far as tenure goes, you're fifth? Yes. Yeah, wow, well, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. You were at the, uh, the joint speech by Donald Trump in front of Congress. Yes, I was. Can you give me your impressions? Well, I think he exceeded expectations. He stayed very much on focus for the biggest issues that we face, uh, and certainly some of the existential threats we face abroad, like Iran, uh, China, Russia. I think you know, the importance of building up our defense, uh, he made a very good case for that, and I think it's real. We have not hallowed out, but to a large extent reduced our, our capabilities, and you know, the best defense uh, and the best military is that which def deters. And there was a moment there that that ended up with the longest standing ovation yes, in yes. congressional history when he looked up into the gallery and pointed out that there was the widow of a Navy SEAL who was killed exactly. during a raid in uh, in Yemen. That moment must have been it was electric. stunning. And, and you know, for all of us, because we all know people who have lost loved ones, that was a, the most touching moment of all in that speech. And the fact that you know we gave her the longest, as you said, ovation, I think, ever, uh, just for her, for her loss, as well as for all the other uh, families who have lost a loved one. Uh, it, it just, uh, you know, we're, we're in absolute solidarity with the, and, and in empathy with the pain that they've suffered. I, it's interesting you brought up solidarity because I know there's been this tenuous relationship between the president and the Republican Party, at least some in the Republican Party. And my feeling is going into that speech that there were many people in the Republican Party, if not all, that were going, oh God, please give a good speech, or please, <laughs> right, right. please, please give a good speech, because he, had he not, it would have been, it's still tumultuous, but it would have been even more tumultuous. We, did you go into the speech with that feeling? Uh, I had a few trepidations, I had a few concerns that, that he might turn this into a press conference, and, uh, and while he's made a very good point about calling out some of the major media that have been unfortunately very biased, uh, it is time to be presidential, and that was the pivot, I think, for him uh, to be presidential, he rose to that occasion. It was a well-rounded speech, uh, and it had a vision. It talked about getting people back to work. Uh, you know, we, we really have had a lackluster recovery over the last eight years. He did mention the $20 trillion worth of debt, uh, which could implode our economy uh, going into the future. It's doubled in the last eight years. Well, we need to build this economy and grow it, and his, his um, you know, reversal of the TPP, which I thought was an egregiously flawed treaty when it comes to issues like like labor uh, and labor unions, as well as the issues of environmental protection, uh, it was disadvantaging the American worker. Uh, so I think revisiting these prior uh, compacts or treaties with other countries, you know, the importance of getting these trade deals right, not just free trade, but fair trade. And I think that's why many in the labor movement, the labor unions, have saying, finally, a breath of fresh air, uh, the American worker must come first. And, and it sounds like you agree with Donald Trump on most issues. On uh, many issues, yes. It, you know, as, as the year unfolds, uh, there will be places where I disagree, and, uh, and I will vote that way. I've done that uh, throughout the entirety of my tenure in Congress, whether it be Reagan, uh, Clinton, Bush, or Bush, or President Obama. Let's, let's talk about the town halls. Sure. Through, across the country, there have been tumultuous town halls uh, where Republicans have gotten up, especially to talk about the Affordable Care Act, and have been shouted down. Yeah. And that has caused many congressmen and senators not to have town halls. You have not had one. Is well, that the well, Larry, reason? I have forums all the time, meeting with constituent groups, meeting with individuals, talking about the issues, and also doing problem solving on casework. You know, there's three jobs of a congressman, writing law, 
and I'm second in the entire country in actual producing laws, uh, not just bills that are introduced, but laws on a variety of subjects, oversight of the laws that we pass, and the third, and I would say the most important, is constituents' casework. And my office and I leave no stone unturned in trying to help people when they have an individual problem. I work out of myself, my staff, uh, you know, are very professional and empathetic. So when people hurl insults, say things like, Chris Smith, I hope you get cancer and die, which we have gotten. So because That's not the, what it should be about. I understand. And by the way, I, I have some of the emails and I have yeah. uh, some of the comments that you're talking about, and they are horrendous. They seem to be coming from one individual. And it says in here, as I've read through them, you called the Washington police on this Oh, yes. Woman? Well, there's at least 20 instances now where people who have been outside, you know, they, they walk around with Valentines saying that somehow they're benign and friendly. And then you look at what they're saying on their blogs, on their Facebook, and what they are saying in the emails to me, which we just print out, we have them. We've gone to the, the threat assessment unit for the U.S. Capitol Police, and they've said, these are real threats. You know, this is like as close to the next thing is violence as you can get. And because so, of that, did you decide not to have a town hall because they are real threats? They are threats to my staff, but even more than that, I believe in dialogue, and that is in dialogue. I had right here in Monmouth County a very important meeting with the Alzheimer's Association representatives from the 4th District. I chair the Alzheimer's Caucus. I formed it in the year 2000, and I work on legislation for Alzheimer's patients, research and the like, uh, all the time. I got a bill passed last year, failed in the Senate, but we'll try again this year on wandering, which is a huge problem for Alzheimer's patients and for autistic children. They go wandering if they have the bracelet on, and Monmouth sheriffs, as well as the sheriff in uh, Ocean and elsewhere, we have great programs where you can find that person within a half hour so they don't get hurt, they don't get mugged. They don't do something, walk into the street and get hit by a car. I have one, now, more, I have one more follow up sure. on the town hall, sure. but I'm going to have to save it till after the break. Okay. You're going to stick around for one Absolutely more segment, not. and I Thank also you. want to get into your new legislation Thank you, after that when we continue our conversation with Congressman Chris Smith from New Jersey's 4th Congressional District when Jersey Matters continues.